Hey everyone, this is Chanyot66, and this is part three of the My Fly Dream autopilot setup and review. This is going to be the installation and a little bit of the soldering required to get it all ready to go in your aircraft. So right here we have the current sensor and we have the two connectors that are going to be going on this. So right now you'll see that that one the connectors are upside down and this one they're going sideways. So to properly solder them onto here if you straighten these out so that they're flat they can set right on there. Your ground is going to be the solid bar, your positive is the outside, and then you want to look at the back here and make sure that the ESC side matches what your battery connector is. So that'll go on right there. So let's get this in the helping hands here. And make sure when you're grabbing it not to grab any of the chips or anything that's on here if you're using a helping hand. Once that's in place, you can start applying heat and start melting your solder into place here. I like to be very generous with my soldering application because you don't want a failure in a section like this. There's one side. We'll let it cool. Once it cools for a minute, you'll actually see the liquid look or gloss go away from the solder. Once that's done, give it a few more seconds just to make sure it cures completely through. Because any movements while soldering weakens the weld. So you want to make sure it's completely set before you actually move it. So you can see here that a little bit of my flux came onto this side, but that's okay. I'll clean that up before we shrink tube it. So now what we can do is grab this again here and reorient our little arms with the other side. Now the other side here, we'll have to flip over as well. This is from a ESC, so there's solder already on it. Anytime that you're soldering the male end of the XT60, you want to make sure to plug a spare female onto it so that it'll help hold these pins in place because there's a lot less material on these ones than on this holding these in place. So that'll make sure that it doesn't melt through itself. Then take your time, properly align these so that when you start soldering you don't have to move it around at all. Just like that. Now I'll do the same thing. Start warming up the components. If you have a hard time getting these held in place, just tack it like I did right there and then work on the other side. Once you have at least both sides tacked, 
then you can go back and start filling in. You don't want, you want to wait for the one side to cure before you start heating the other side or else you can lose everything you just did because they'll both be liquid and easy, easy to move. Okay, so now that we have both sides soldered, we can flip it over, check everything. Still wait a second because it's still very shiny, like it's curing. Okay. So if we flip this over here, you'll see that some of the solder actually fed its way through. That's okay. Uh, you can leave it like that, or you can melt it down. Once you put a heat sink on this, or heat shrink on this, you're not going to see it anyways, but you can smooth it out if you'd like. Now you have this all ready. You can remove your spare XT60 connector. Get your heat shrink and slide it on here. And you can shrink it down. There it is. Okay, now that we have our current sensor all ready to go, and if you'd like to see what this is, uh, watch at the end for my bonus footage, and you'll see what I'm doing here. What we want to do is we we'll want to start off with positioning our autopilot. Now the front of my aircraft is out this direction, so I'm going to be mounting this right here and what I'm going to use for it is 3M adhesive tape. This stuff is extremely strong and works really well for pretty much anything that you need to mount in an aircraft. So I'll put a strip on the front and a strip on the back here. There we go. And if we peel off the second layer of the double-sided tape, we can actually mount it in place. Now you want to make sure everything is square with how the aircraft will be. So I'm making sure to line it all up here. Keep it as straight as possible. So now that's mounted on there. Okay, now that we have this all square, I'm going to add one more feature to my whole pod here. And that's going to be a lost alarm. So I'm going to do the same thing, a 
apply some 3M adhesive tape. Cut off the excess. There it is. And this is going to go right next to the autopilot. I have to keep the edges clear because that's where the rails slide in. Now we can attach the current sensor. And we'll be attaching the cable that's going to go up to my FPV pod. And this wire, coming from the current sensor, is actually coming from a 12 volt regulator that's built inside here. And that is going to go right there. So now everything is powered from this single connection. So this can run up to wherever my batteries are or near my ESC, wherever I need. This is going to go up to my transmitter with my camera cable here. So this will go up to the FPV pod on my aircraft. And this is going to be mounted up on the aircraft, probably right under the wing, uh, since the wing is just styrofoam. Uh, this will be fine sitting under the wing. Um, if you had anything else like a composite aircraft, make sure it's mounted on the outside or out on the tail, or somewhere where it's going to get full view of the sky. But in a styrofoam airplane, uh, as long as you don't have a spar directly over it, you'll be okay. And you want to keep it away from a motor uh, as much as you can. So now the only other thing we have are servos and the PPM connection. So what I'm going to be doing is my receiver is going to be mounted to the bottom of this tray using the same method. So I'm going to attach my tape here. And tape on the other end here. Now this is going to sit right underneath the autopilot. And what they'll allow me do to do is take the PPM wire and tuck it right through here. And you can t plug it in. I'm actually going to be taking this off and putting a toroid on there. I know it's small, but any place that you can uh, cancel noise. Okay, once the receiver's stuck on the bottom and you plug the PPM wire in, I just passed it straight through here, that is all ready to go. So you can tuck this up how you like, and if you're running RSSI, you can drop it down as well. Okay, on a previous video, I had someone asking about the RSSI connection. So I'll show it here using a single wire jumper. It's going to go from your RSSI pin, which on the Dragon Link is right here, the closest pin to the antenna. And I will pass it through the wood here and bring it up. And it's going to plug directly between the video transmitter and the current sensor just right there I'll pull the excess down underneath here and there it is so now video in video out this will actually pass through here
and is going to plug into channel 7. One other connection I have to do on this FPV pod is for my pan tilt assembly on my GoPro. Which, it only has pan, so I'm going to use channel 8. And there it is. So now everything's ready to roll. We can start installing it in the Skywalker. Hey everyone, this is Chanyo66, and this is a bonus clip for those of you who want to go a little bit more advanced on your FPV system. Basically what I did here is I took the MyFlyDream autopilot current sensor and put on a 3 amp variable regulator. This is a switching regulator and they're extremely clean. I've used it on multiple uh, types of video equipment and haven't had any real issues with it. Um, only noise I've seen is if it's stressing really hard, so if you have it running all kinds of equipment, it'll have a little issue. But if you have a 1000 milliwatt video transmitter and a flight camera, you'll be fine. So anyways, what I did is I soldered it directly onto the current sensor here, so it's sandwiched in. And that supplies 12 volt out. And this handles anything from 3S to 6S. So it'll drop down just about anything you want. And I have it soldered in on the ESC side so even its power is counted. And that'll be able to supply whatever I need on the other end. There one those Chanyo 66 and this is another bonus footage for the MyFlyDream autopilot installation. Uh, what I'm going to show you here is what I did for my connection to my FPV pod. Now my FPV pod, I'm going to have the camera that goes up to my flight camera. And then I have the wiring that goes up to my video transmitter. What I did on the back here is I used a multi-connector. And I have a connection that goes to my video transmitter from my camera and to my servo into this. And then what I did on here is the video I used the MyFlyDream shielded cable and connect it in here and I have a servo connection in here. So those lock together. Single connection for the entire pod to go and you can see down here it splits off runs into my receiver and then runs into here. And what I did with this is actually use the video sorry use the audio wire that runs inside here and use that as the camera input and then used the other three pins underneath here from the normal transmitter cable so you have your ground power and video so with all of these connected that'll run everything on the pod through an extremely slim setup I also went along and organized the cable here because everything that you can save weight on and clean up, uh, the better you're going to have and a better experience you'll have, especially if you have to start troubleshooting things. It's all extremely clean so you can look at it. If you look at the wires that go from my PPM and RSSI, I shortened them so that they are as long, only as long as I need to run into the autopilot. And that is it. So if you have any questions or want to know more about the connectors I used on here, uh, just shoot me a message.